Lesson four of unit five is going to be about binary and polyatomic ionic compounds. So we're going to be examining the different rules for how we write them down, and we're going to be talking about the crisscross and reverse crisscross method. So binary and polyatomic ion rules um, have the same idea. You put the cation name first, and then the anion name second. It's a little bit more than that. The anion ends up with an IDE ending, though. So you chop off the ending and you add IDE instead. So for example, if you have the formula MgCl2, we call it magnesium chloride. Not magnesium chlorine, but magnesium chloride. So the polyatomic ion is the same, but you just leave it the same. You don't change the ending. So in this case, you have NO3, which is a nitrate, and it's bound to a sodium, so we call it sodium nitrate. So looking at the next two examples, because it's binary, it's going to end in the IDE ending. So fluorine turns into fluoride. SO4 is turn, uh, hmm. the next example is a polyatomic ion, so you're going to leave the name alone. So it's going to be cesium sulfate. So now let's try these examples. You have Al2CO33, Li3P, CaCrO4, and NH4Cl. Do the numbers matter in the name? At the moment, they do not matter. At the moment, they don't matter. They will matter in a little bit when we talk about transition metals and ionic bonds. Oh, okay. So when you look at these, and you guys should be trying these on your own, you should be getting answers similar to this. For example, the first is aluminum carbonate. The second would be lithium phosphide. Again, that's binary. The third one down is calcium chromate, CrO4 is a polyatomic ion. And ammonium, that's a tricky one, that is one of the positive cations of the polyatomics. And it's being mixed with a binary chloride, so you get ammonium chloride. Our recommendation is count how many letters there are. First check table E if there's more than two capital letters. Find that name first and then name the other element that's involved. So crisscross method, you're going to take the name of the ionic compounds, aluminum nitrate, write down the ions that are in aluminum nitrate. So you're noticing aluminum is going to be your cation, and the nitrate is your anion. Again, use your reference tables to find the actual ions. But aluminum is a positive 3 charge. Nitrate is the NO3 minus 1. The anion charge is going to end up equaling the number of cations and the cation charge is going to equal the number of anions. So this is what we mean by the crisscross method. Watch as it goes through. So notice that the 1 represented how many aluminum ions we would need, and the 3 from the positive 3 charge represented how many nitrate ions we would need. That is the entire crisscross method right there. Once you write out the ions, Put the charges as the number of the opposite ion. So again, formula units, something we've recently talked about, you have to make sure that your compounds are in the lowest ratio. If it's a 2 to 2 ratio like we see here, it has to be simplified to a 1 to 1. So right now we want you guys to pause the video, looking at all these names, Find their ions and do the crisscross method to write out what their actual formulas are. We will be checking all this in class.